Okay, today's video will be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to go in and show some of the uh, how I do STM8 uh, development. Uh, in particular, I'm actually going to show some of the uh, uh, what I use to do the uh, HC control. Uh, I have two uh, main development environments that I use. One is the STM8, uh, which uses the SDCC compiler. Uh, the other is uh, using GNU ARM um, compiler, GCC. Um, for the STM32 and pretty much I use this everywhere uh, in all of my uh, embedded solutions um, and I'm just going to go in real quick and uh, kind of show you how I uh, build the STM8 project and hopefully it'll it'll help others get started the STM8 is really good um, it's a low-cost processor uh, it's relatively fast for its price and um, it has a lot of nice peripherals uh, and not to mention on the, in particular on the HCC control, um, I was looking for a really small pin count device that was inexpensive, uh, and they actually have an automotive rated version of that uh, with CAN bus. Um, I've gotten a, in a habit of I actually store all of the KI CAD stuff in in Git control, uh, version source control, uh, and then I store the firmware with the project, um, and it's actually really simple. Um, I'm just going to give you a look here at the make file. Um, so this is the entire make file. And basically, um, you've got uh, your SDCC compiler up here. Um, I just do real simple build, source, include directories. Uh, that particular design is using the STM8S003. Uh, which is the lowest um, on the STM8 line. It's, it's basically the, one of their smallest chips that they make. Um, I think uh, cost on it is around 70 cents. Um, and that's mainly why I use the device. It's supposed to be really inexpensive, uh, easy to put together, low pin count, and it's reliable. Um, and just to kind of give you an example, really the only thing different uh, on this than, than what I normally do is the fact that it's going to be using uh, SDCC as a compiler and it's going to be using STM8 Flash and that's down here at the bottom. Uh, and for my particular build, um, I'm using, uh, the, again, the STM8 S003 series. Uh, I also use the A series, which is the automotive style uh, with CAN bus. Now, this particular build is it has a 485 driver on it. And this is going to be a really simple build. They do have a uh, hardware abstraction layer uh, for the STM8 series and the 32 series. Um, I, I don't usually use it in this really small chip. And the main reason is because on this particular chip, um, you're, you're just too constrained as far as flash goes. Um, this particular um, program is really simple. It's got uh, very, you know, basically no external dependencies. Um, and really all this device is doing is it's just constantly polling um, the FET devices for how much current they're at, um, what their temperature is currently, um, and it can turn them on and off. It's also looking through inputs, and on this particular thing, uh, this is designed for automotive use. Um, so basically I am uh, uh, optically isolating the 12 volt inputs to something the microcontroller can see. So basically you can uh, control really large current uh, devices with just really uh, uh, cheap and inexpensive switches um, or you know your normal 12 volt stuff and it's basically uh, designed to work with uh, what you probably already have like uh, the, this one in particular is for uh, uh, the original one that I did for my razor uh, and I wanted to be able to turn on um, my light bar and my radio and uh, the backup lights, um, and, and for that I actually ended up, ended up going with a CAN based device. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, there's a little bit of difference in the protocol uh, as far as what I do on the uh, 485 versus CAN bus. Uh, this particular one is 4, 485. Um, this is a design that I originally did uh, before I really needed CAN bus and I wanted a really simple way of controlling things and this was actually um, what I control my ham radios um, and also a couple of things in my toy hauler um, 
a 485 typically is is a lot faster. I can update firmware over that, um, and I have a lot more uh, control over the bus. Uh, CAN bus is good for short uh, length packets typically. Um, but basically, here in the code, um, you've got your standard stuff. This is all interrupt driven. Uh, UART one uh, it has a you know it receives it receives data and basically processes the data as it comes in. Um, I think on this one I'm using one timer uh, basically to time everything. Um, and you know obviously we're checking inputs uh, at every pole to see if we've turned on a switch or some other conditions been met. Um, on this one, what, basically what's happening, um, I'm, I'm using one ADC and all of the current uh, measurements are actually multiplexed. So what this processor is doing is it's going around really, really fast and basically pulling uh, an ADC reading um, and making sure that you know we're in, within current limits. Um, even though the device is, uh, will, will support around 40 amps, uh, some versions that I have, um, you know, they're, they're, they have less uh, copper on the board, so they're only rated at 18. So what this does is allow me to, without a fuse, and I do typically still put a fuse on the input side, but without a fuse, basically, you know, shut the output off if it gets too hot or there's too much current. Um, I'm also measuring voltage with this ADC, and that's basically just a really simple um, current limiting voltage divider uh, that's basically just taking a look at the 12-volt uh, line. And it's scaled to work up to about 18 volts. And on down here is some logic. And basically what this logic is, uh, is it's actually setting and clearing bits to operate the MUX uh, for the uh, ADC inputs. Um, and that's pretty much it. These, these are really simple devices. Um, this is just some sample code uh, that I did uh, for, for the 485 version of this um, and it, it's really a nice platform especially if you want to do something simple because with this I don't really use an IDE I just use an editor um, I'm either using Nano or, or uh, VIM or uh, even uh, Atom uh, depending on what platform you want. I typically do all my development uh, on uh, Macintosh um, Just want to show you one other thing, um, and this this works just like uh, you know standard Linux uh, or Unix uh, builds. Basically, you just go and form a make, um, and basically that would build uh, the program. And I, I don't have one connected now, but right now that would actually build the uh, application and actually output that over the ST-Link uh, version 2. Um, one of the things that I do have I've done for a, a long time now is uh, use like Tag Connect adapters. Um, that's one thing that is just really nice for both development because you can buy the connector that actually has tabs on it um, to hold it on there during debugging. Now the STM8, you're not going to really be able to debug. The STM32, you do. But I still use that same connector just to standardize my um, programming uh, fixtures and things like that. But when it comes time to production, it's really fast to program those chips if you can't get them, if you can't purchase them pre-programmed. Anyway, just a quick Labor Day weekend uh, STM8 uh, intro uh, and kind of show how I how I build my projects on STM8. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, and thanks for watching.